Paul, great scenes, well, throughout the game on Saturday, but at the end, the celebrations, um, it looked like everyone enjoyed it. I just wonder about how you deal with the emotional highs and lows, which at this sort of time of the season are going to be even more pronounced than ever. Yeah, I, I mean, I think uh, my normal answer would probably be like to try and dampen things down. But in fairness, I think we threw petrol on it a little bit. I think, uh, look, I want the lads to enjoy their lives. I want them to enjoy special moments. I want them to make memories. And I want them to realise how amazing it is to win and the feelings you give everyone. So, I mean, the highlight, I mean, this is probably, I don't know if this should go on the record, but Rob, our fitness coach, was having a good time. I think encouraged by uh, a young Martin Waghorn to um, enjoy the bounce and everything with the crowd. So today in our team meeting, as always, we go through the same process. I'm trying to predominantly show positives of the game at the weekend, but we had a meeting where I showed all the positives from the game, had a few individuals I spoke to on their own, and then, then straight into another meeting of, um, we had Take That, uh, Greatest Day of Our Life is the soundtrack, and it was Rob as Gary Barlow. And then uh, it, all, it was brilliantly done by the analyst, uh, James, sorry. Um, and then it came to him back, the goals going in with your commentary. And then, this is, I'm giving a lot back to the club here, aren't I? And then um, he was doing the bounce and then he was sort of trying to get the crowd going, but no one was looking at him. So Waggy was going, no, no, give it another go. They'll love it, they'll love it. And then it goes on to Klopp doing it. And then it goes back to Rob doing it. So it went down an absolute storm in the, in the meeting. So in answer to your question, um, I want the lads to enjoy their moments. And there's like, you know, nine games left so keep that feeling if you could bottle it up you could sell it for a lot of money but uh also you, you get grounded straight away because this is how bristol rovers play they didn't really pressure uh this is our reading play they're the best pressing pressing team in the league so they're two different games so you can enjoy the game like boom here we go in the same meeting right here we go this is reading so uh yeah so i want the lads and there's no better feeling weirdly Winning away from home and you know you're on the bus together for two, two and a half hours, it's, it's a great thing. A two and a half journey after defeat, horrific. A two and a half journey after a three nil comprehensive win is uh, right up there. How much do you like the fact that it extends beyond the players into the rest of the staff, the, the celebrations and, and the engagement? Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, I say it to the team all the time, but a lot of people uh, who work at football clubs, like, I appreciate uh, it's a... It's a, not an honoured job, but being a professional, an elite footballer or an elite sportsman, you know, it's a very short career. You get paid pretty handsomely compared to normal jobs. I understand that, but you don't have it for very long. But the people who work at football clubs aren't as uh, handsome. Uh, they do it because they enjoy football, they enjoy their job and they need a job, obviously. And there's always people at a football club who love the club. So, like, I love winning because I know how much Davo loves winning. So the kit man's like like the happiest man in the world when we win. So all them people are the photographers and all obviously Rams TV and everything like that. But you just feel like everyone wins. There's certain games you win and you, you walk off the pitch and you think, okay, we won next game. There's certain games you win and you feel like everyone's had a piece of it. And that felt more like that Saturday, the dressing room was buzzing after the lads. I knew before the game, you could see the lads look like right up for it. There's no science to this. It was just a gut feeling. I've been in the dressing room loads of times. I just thought, the lads would do well and they wanted to do well for everybody and it felt like everyone had a part in that win and hence why possibly I haven't uh, pulled everyone down as quick because you know you don't have that many times in life when you're that happy so um, yeah it's brilliant for everybody and like the fans who travelled it didn't feel like I remember moaning at the time it didn't feel like we had as many um, so they were like the creme de la creme de la creme weren't they so uh, which pleases me massively. However, by not taking that many, they didn't see our, our wonder goal that was supposedly offside that wasn't. So like, hopefully when you're listening to this interview, this is when it fades in like a Scooby-Doo moment and then you're putting the passing move in and they're going, oh my God, the way they edit this is amazing. Uh, and then it's gone in and oh, it wasn't offside. So yeah, so on the whole, really pleased for everybody, everyone at the football club, brilliant, great to win a game. And then, you know, it's, we're obviously down off it now. Um, and then we've got to try and win again tomorrow, and that's what every team in the league's trying to do. Um, I know it's a team effort, but I wanted to ask about a couple of individuals. I know we talked about Nathaniel Mendes Lang an awful lot, um, but he is putting together a historic season in, in Derby County terms, uh, in terms of assists. I just wondered if you could give us a bit of an insight into what it's like working with him. Does he, does he take much motivation? Uh, not much motivation, no. He wants to do well. He gets frustrated when he doesn't go well. 
Um, he's perfect in his like life. If you look at him, if you go to his locker, it'll be immaculate. He's always immaculate. He's always, I don't know, this sounds a bit weird, but he always seems like perfectly moisturized. Everything about him is like bang on point all the time. So he struggles, he gets frustrated when things don't go his way. So as a player, he's easy to manage when things are going his way. If things aren't going his way, he gets frustrated. I'm not saying he's hard to manage because he isn't, but in the moment he gets himself uh, in a state. Um, but then all the top players do. If you see De Bruyne come off the pitch yesterday, like you can see him, he's like raging, isn't he? So, so I think Nat's performances this year have been um, pr pretty phenomenal, really. And there has been times in the season that I've said to the lads on the bench, if anything happens to Nat, we're in trouble here. And you know I like to play with athletes, you know I like to play with pace, and obviously getting Corey in the building helps massively, although we need, excuse me, to get him more game time. It's difficult because the lads in front of him are doing so well, and Tom's hit really good form, and he's really athletic. So there is other players, but I think Nat's performances this year have been brilliant. I, I don't think what he surprised me with this year, as opposed to last year, and this credit to all the medical team and physical team uh, and himself, is he just seems fitter. And to play for me isn't easy. I say this all the time. People can't walk around out of possession. I don't carry anyone. Uh, and I just think his, his dedication to keep himself in good nick and you know, then play the amount of minutes he has is, is, is testament to him. So last year we had a massive problem playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday with him. I did with a few. Uh, but this year um, he's really stepped up and he's needed to because um, he's you know, one of the most important players. The other man I wanted to mention actually isn't in the building at the moment, but Dijon Brown got a hat-trick at the weekend for Gateshead. Um, he's finding goals for them. Presumably this is exactly why the loan was the right thing for him at this moment. Yeah, yeah, the loan's been good for him. I mean, he scored at the he scored a hat-trick at the weekend. I texted him this morning, to be honest. And I was speaking, we had someone go up to the game and I spoke to them about uh, Deji's performance and hopefully he'll get more game time. But, yeah, it's essential. Like, if you look at Liverpool's team at the weekend, I think they had two players who were on League, League One duty last year with Bristol Rovers and uh, Bolton. So you need players to go out and play. You need them to feel the weirdly the disappointment of not playing. You need them to feel the the need of a win. You need them to um, play at a harder physical level than what he was playing. Like we said all along, Dej, you know, potentially has got a, a really good future in the game, and I hope he does. But there's no point being the biggest, strongest kid and thinking everything's easy because it isn't. You step up a level, and you know. Uh, weirdly, it looks like you're down a level, but you're not. Playing uh, non-league football is very tough, so it will do him really good stead. And hopefully, that he'll come back to us in the summer and we'll reevaluate him and think, right, is he any closer to the team? Yes, no. Will he go on loan to? Could we get him to a like a League Two club? Could we, you know? And it sometimes it's weird. You um, you loan out players, uh, and people are thinking, well, if you're such good coaches, not that I'm saying we are, by the way, but as a group, why would you? loan him out for someone else to coach but it's the experience you can't give him uh, and I think Dej is having a, a really good loan and like I said it would do him good and then he'll come back and think well I want more game time okay if you want more game time you know these are the faults we've seen in your game when you've been away this is what they said as well uh, we need to help you with this this and this to give you more chance and then you get buy-in from the player whereas if he stays here and scores two every week playing against you know other 17 18 year olds it isn't helping developing so yeah really pleased for him and Hopefully, he'll continue to play. Big week continues for you um, on Tuesday um, with Reading. We know the issues that the club are having, but equally, we know how sort of galvanising that can be for players, fans, managers. Yeah, and obviously, you uh, we know it quite well at this football club. So, look, the the, the team on paper is um, as good as any other team on paper. Uh, and when we played at their place, it wasn't a great night. I thought. Uh, we didn't finish with anything first half, which was a problem, um, and we lost, obviously, and it, I still remember the game mainly for poor JJ, and we went down to 10 men for 10 minutes, not that we would have necessarily got anything if we had stayed 11, but it was just a sad night for us, and it's, it's just a, a good indication of this league, or any league of, in sport, that if you're not at the best, you're not at your best, and the opposition are playing well, you're going to lose. So it doesn't matter what the opposition is. I don't, I don't regard the Reading opposition any harder than the Bolton opposition as I do Pompey away. I just think if we're at our very best, we're hard to beat. And it's about us trying to get ourselves into that mind space. All right, here we go again. 
hopefully Pride Park will be bouncing and think, right, come on lads, let's see if we can get another three points. So I full, fully respect what they're doing. They're a really good pressing team, the best pressing team in the league, which can't be underestimated because a lot of teams press now um, and make it difficult. They've got goals throughout their team and they've got some you know, some players, um, especially Wingy, because I've worked with him before, but some goals in their team and they're a real threat. So um, we're well aware of how good they'll be. Same squad as the weekend? Uh, same squad, yeah. We've got uh, Callum Elder and uh, Craig Forsyth. Um, I always sound a bit posh saying his surname. It sounds a bit Forsyth. Um, yeah, so we've got them back in the squad, which is good. Um, uh, you know, in a 20-man squad. So uh, we're looking all right. I think it might have come a bit too soon for Tyrese Fauna. He's still a little bit stiff in the back. So, um, yeah, so we'll be there or thereabouts.